<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Father Paul, and this is the Good News. The scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 15 through to 25. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. <clears throat> for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. This piece of scripture we read this morning is a little subheading called Great Tribulation. Of course it would be these sort of things happening. During uh, my time of reading this, I had lots of thoughts go through my head, all these terrible things happening. It remind me of the wars that have happened and are still happening in some part of the world. Some generations have grown up not even knowing peace, but destruction, blood everywhere. But what do we get out of this? A warning, I think we would say is the bottom line. To be prepared for it, to be prepared, and to be careful, as Jesus said, then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. We have been told oh, what, what can happen, or what will happen. So, the question is, are you prepared? Are you prepared for these times? I'm not sort of saying that we should go and build bunkers under the ground and stuff like that and hide away. Or even to go and live on top of a mountain. We need to be prepared for the end times. We need to be prepared 
to answer for all we have done. Well, what can we say? I, are we prepared? Ask yourself that question. Are you prepared for the time the new face Christ on the judgment seat for all that you have done for all those times that we turn away from Christ we sin are you prepared these readings continue on from the last few days we must be prepared We must be prepared. We may be beaten, burnt, lots of horrific things happening to us. Evil can do lots of things to us, to our bodies. But we must not let anything happen to our souls. We must be prepared. Do good. Under any circumstances that may happen. Pray to God. As it said in this reading here. But woe to those who are pregnant or to those who are nursing babies in those days. Pray that your flight may be not in winter or on the Sabbath. <coughs> I urge you all to be ready. Yes, I have urged you all. Pray to God. Pray for the help. Pray to the Holy Spirit that he will be there with you, and he will. You only need to ask, you shall receive. That's the important thing. Do we ask? Do we ask for help, for help from God? Jesus went back to heaven to his Father. He didn't leave us alone, didn't leave us orphans. He left us the Holy Spirit. But we must, must ask for it. Stop being independent, thinking, I don't need that. I don't need that help. That can be classified, of course, as pride. We all need help. We all need help in a battle that we are having every day with Satan. Ask, and ye shall receive. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit be upon you and, re and remain with you always. Amen.